So this is my FX61. Uh, it's a flight I did some time back, scooting the outside of uh, a mountain close by here. So today I was out testing my walk snail avatar goggles and trying to pick the range up on, on those. Previously we did a 1.5 or 1.6 maximum distance with the stock antennas. So I've, I've just got myself some triple feed patch antennas, three of them, and one Omni just to add with the VTX side on the goggles. So we're testing this. This isn't this flight that you're looking at now. This was a previous one. We're testing this and um, it lost range, it did, and unfortunately the craft is, is no longer with me. We're going to go through the footage and I'm going to show you exactly what we did and my conclusion to what happened and why shouldn't copy anyone's CLI or files from a different plane. Do your own tuning, do your own building make the plane uniquely yours. Certain things you can copy I agree with, like the OSD, but certainly don't fully copy someone's CLI or default file. That's bad news. I'm going to walk you through this. We're going to cut from here now and go down to the field where the video is actually testing the range and trying to better the range with three triple feed patch antennas and one Omni on the Walk Snail Avatar Goggle X, and like I said, the plane didn't come back, but I know where it is. Well, if you can see right up there on that hill, that's uh, below that hill's where my old flying field was. They're putting a water treatment plant in there now, so it looks like my flying days there are done. So it might be a might have to look for somewhere new, but I've, I have found this spot here, which seems okay. It's a bit narrower for landing. And you're surrounded by the cane trees here, the cane, the cane fields. So yeah, anyway, we're, as we said before, we're, we've got these new aerials that we're gonna be trying. Um, so I just thought I'd show you with this, my FX61 here, just uh, I've got the telemetry hooked up here onto the radio so I can see how many satellites. So the best thing is uh, hooking it up with a battery, you find you um, you either got to disconnect the VTX because it will overheat, your HD system. So the best way I do it, I grab myself a, a power bank, like I've got here, this little round power bank, and just connect that up to the flight, to the flight controller. Got that connected into my Speedy B F405 wing here. And that activates the GPS. So while I'm getting myself prepared, it's it's collecting satellites at the moment. So we've got 11 satellites now. We're ready to go. And what I'll do, I'll just connect the battery up and then hopefully we can fly it, throw it in the air. It's a very calm spot here. There's not a lot of breeze, uh, but there is some wind today. What we might do is try and fly up over to that hill there. Uh, they are saying 50 kilometer an hour winds above 100 meters, so we'll see how we go. All right, guys, let's give it a shot. See what sort of range we can get with our new antennas. Uh, 1.3 kilometers was what we had before out of the stock aerials. With these new patches, hopefully we should be able to at least get that. I'm not going to push too much further than that, but just for the legal reasons side of things. But we'll see what we're reading at 1.3 just to compare. Auto launch activated, and that's another INAV auto launch. Plane's very been very good in general most of its life with um, the INAV auto launches. And I apologise for the uh, quality of the high definition feed, as it's only coming from the goggles due to the plane not returning. Right, so we are running INAV 7.1 on this flight. And uh, like I previously said, this is the final flight for this plane, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to go through what my theory is here and what, what I've done wrong. It's pretty simple, I think. Uh, anyone would like to add to that, most definitely welcome in the comments. Uh, we'll discuss what the plans are with this project um, afterwards. So currently we're just loitering around while I get my goggles set up here. Um, and while we're doing that, I'll just show you the new patch feed antennas that I've 
put on the goggles and what I've got new on the craft itself. I went on AliExpress and I found these uh, triple feed patch antennas. So I've got decided to get three of them because they're only cheap. Um, they do have an antenna gain of 9.4 dBi. These aerials can be used either right hand circular polarized or left hand circular polarized, whichever you choose. So that's pretty handy. Uh, if you do, you might just have to make sure that you buy yourself a RF terminator to be put on to the signal output that you're not using. So we've got three triple feed patch antennas. They have 9.4 dBi. That was the main reason I thought I might get them just because I couldn't afford what I really want just at this stage, which were the True RC X2 Airs. I do plan on getting four of them eventually. So I thought just to give it a shot, I'll see how good these are. They were cheap antennas. And also at the same time, I upgraded the antenna on the Walksnail Avatar HD Pro with uh, one of these as well. It's a long range hammer antenna from HGLRC. It has a 2.5 dBi gain. All right, so we head out now that I've sort of set myself up out of that loiter. Goggles are on, everything's in place and all comfortable. So the plan is to go out to this hill here which is further than the previous test on the stock antennas so previously we reached 1.6 I think it was 1.6 kilometers with the stock aerials so at the bottom you can see the signal is on 3 bit rate is 23 thereabouts and we're at an 800 meter distance now keep an eye on the altitude as well while we're doing this we're at 130 meters um, I'm gonna have to go up higher than that as we climb up this mountain which is legal so as we climb up we're reaching nearly 200 meters above our takeoff point uh, we've got a signal strength of 2 and we've now reached a 1.6 kilometer range which is where we got to previously so it just shows these antennas do a bit better job than the stock stubby antennas that come with the goggles X so bit rates 11 signal strength still at 2 we're at 2 kilometers now I never reached 2 kilometers previously with the standard setup so that in itself just shows you it's a little bit better so we're up at 256 260 meters in altitude from where we took off um, and it's enough to clear that the height the highest part of this hill as you can see we, we come around here we got fairly decent height above the top of the hill we're un we're underneath the 120 meters above ground level as well from the top of the hill there so there's no issue there and plan was to sort of keep it here but i got a bit sort of anxious and wanted to just try and see if we can better our range a little bit further which maybe i shouldn't have done so now we bank back around to the left here this feed too sorry guys is a bit patchy from the goggles that's all i could do because like i said the craft never came back so we decided to venture out here to try and push the range a little bit here on the on the aerials and the vtx so we've got two signal strength of two we're out to 2.5 kilometers now uh, still up pretty high but I wanted to keep that height just so that if return to home kicked in we weren't going to have an issue with the hill coming back so that's why I've kept it at this height I wasn't going to go past the road here it was as far as I wanted to go we reached three kilometers now still with signal strength of two I thought if we can get it out to 3.5 I'll turn around which is why I'm sort of scooting now up the side of the 
where the highway is and below the cane field, still well well over the, the off from the highway. We're still actually above the edge of the mountain here. And this is where it cut out. That was the end of the feed. So if we have a look at our very last set of frames before the video cut out, you can see we're at 284 metres, which was still pretty much high enough to get back over the hill that was behind us. So what's happened is we lost line of sight from where I was at 3.4 kilometres in distance, and the height is at 284 metres above that mountain there, above our, oh, sorry, 284 metres above our home point, which was required to get back over that mountain if the fail safe happened. So that's what happened. The fail safe has happened and it's put itself on return to home. At 284 metres, I thought it would have come back fine. I was waiting for it and it didn't come back. I did me manage to get radio signal after I drove around a bit and um, I'll show you what we found. So I don't know guys, I might have lost a plane. It went behind this hill here, but I was well and truly over the top of that. And then it lost reception and I've got nothing at all. So I'm just hoping it picks it up. What's quite odd is it was only three and a half kilometers away. And nothing really other than the mountain, which I was above. Lost craft alert. So I'm not too sure why it's not picking it up. Never had an issue like this ever. Should be able to pick something up by now. It, it went over the other side. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Our life signal critical. Telemetry connected. Okay, so it's found, it has found it. It's picked it up. It's back in range, but where is it? Telemetry My guess is, is that it's hit the hill. Telemetry recovered. It's hit the hill by the look of it. It's strange because it must have dripped, dropped, dropped. The only thing I can think of it was fighting a headwind coming back. But I don't know why it would have dipped itself down below the height I had it at because it was over 200 metres to get over that peak and I had plenty of clearance when it lost, lost signal. I reckon it's out over there. I've got a feeling it's dipped its, its height on its return and fail safe and hit the mountain only thing I can think of but the good thing is I have got range here so I don't think I can get it though if it's up there but I have got coordinates so what I'll do is go back onto Google Earth and we'll see exactly where that is I'll just write those coordinates down I think well I think this could be a lost cause guys unfortunately shit happens I guess this is how it goes but um, I'm not getting any pickup of reception coming back towards where I took off from so I would assume if it's made it back home it would be sitting somewhere in there where I launched from and I can't get any reception other than where I was before on the back of that mountain so I've got a feeling it's dropped its altitude on its return to home for the fail safe I'd say it's dropped its altitude on its return and fail safe let me just move this, and it's hit the mountain. My mistake, I did want to fly over that mountain. Um, so it, it does happen. I was high enough, I went over it. Um, and I was at, I believe, 230 something metres at one stage going over the top. So it lost reception, and then uh, that was all I last saw of it. So it must have gone down. It, it was coming back into a headwind, so maybe it's come back down. What we might do, I'll drive back to where we launched just to confirm it, and then we've still got... It was reading 67% battery. Um, pretty sure by now my uh, Walk Snail HD Pro is now toasted, sitting there, wherever it is. But I did record the GPS, and we'll have a look at it in a minute. It's quite sentimental to me that um, FX61, it was the first plane I actually built. And it's actually got the best views on my channel too in the way of the Speedy V F405 uh, wing flight controller that's in it. So looks like we've lost all that. Plus our, our uh, Walksnell, Walksnell uh, Pro 
But anyway, that's what it is, it's part of the hobby. It's the first plane I've actually technically lost, it looks like. But that was my mistake purely, launching where it was. I mean, I never, well, I wouldn't have gone out that direction if I was at my original field. And as we're coming over this hill here, you'll be able to see what's going on at my old field, which I won't be able to go here anymore. So that makes it uh, quite, makes it quite a bit difficult to fly as you can see that's where the field was over there they've, they've mowed all the grass down you can't get in now they've they've actually got a, a, a fenced barrier off now so I can't fly from there so the only place I launch I thought was a good enough launch and it is pretty good is from here and I don't see the plane so it's um, most definitely somewhere up in that mountain on the other side yeah, we've still got no range, so it's 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 most telemetry recovered. Oh, it's close, hey. It's just picking it up in that direction there. Wow, well, it must have just clipped the very top. Like I said, I was I went over that. That's the highest peak, right? You're looking at there, and I went over that in the video as you've seen. Um, so all I can suggest is it, it did a return to home and it's lost altitude for some reason so I don't know whether I've made a yeah it's gonna be hard to find that one now whether I've selected something on my settings in the return to home where it's made a gradual descent after it's hit return to home I don't think I did that but maybe that's all I can think of it was a mistake there where it started dropping altitude on its return to home and um, it went from 200 plus meters, which would have cleared the, the hill uh, down to what it's at at the moment, which is on the radio saying 170 meters. I still would have thought it, yeah. Yeah, well, you win some, you lose some, guys. Although it was disappointing losing that. Um, just means I've got to build something now. I like that FX-61, it was a beautiful plane. Maybe I could even redo that again. We may look at that. It was a pretty old craft in need of a bit of TLC. So who knows? We might res we might revive it with uh, all new all new gear again. Unfortunately, we're gonna have we have probably lots of the Walk Snail HD Pro by the look of it, which would be the most expensive part. But other than that. Well, rest in peace, I think it might be. I'm going to go around the other side of the mountain and see what we can pick up. And I'd just like to be able to get some video feed. We've actually got pretty good, pretty good link quality too. So it has to be on this side. And as you go further back down this way, down the road, you lose the signal. So you get the signal only from here onwards up the road towards... What? where we took off from where you lose it so it must be on this side here somewhere there is no hope of getting that because it's saying altitude of 180 meters so it's up near the top i can't see anything there but it's up near the top somewhere rest in peace fx61 so confirmation there it is guys that's the coordinates that i've just put into my google maps and as you can see, it's up there. Uh, yep, it's stuck. Stuck, and there's no way I can really get into that by the look. We'll make an attempt, but I don't think we can do it. So this is as close as I can get. I'm at the base of the hill here right now, and she is out that way. Somewhere up the top there. <clears throat> Too hard to get, it's too thick, I can't get into that. And um, no drone, I might be able to put the Mavic up there and have a look down and see if we can see it one day. But at the end of the day, guys, um, the plane was on the verge of having a, a rebuild. Yeah, I've lost certain parts on it, which I'm gonna have to replace. So yeah, it's a shame. But yeah, that's how it happens. When you lose line of sight and you are not high enough. I'd just like to know why it went down, so I must have made a mistake with one of my settings, I guess, on iNav. So that's why, guys, don't copy people's CLIs, because you never know. Do your own sort of thinking, do your own tuning. The whole hobby is a learning curve, so 
and we're up there somewhere. So looking through the old diff all files on the FX61 I've got on my computer, uh, the, old, the, the latest one that I could find was iNav 7.0 and going through it all there I couldn't actually see the issue that I was hoping to find. But what I have found is an old video where I've screen where I've copied all of my iNav 7.1 settings and if we go into the advanced uh, tuning tab I found the problem linear descent is on so this plane was at 250 meters like it should have been above the mountain it's fail safe and it's used the linear descent on its route back to home with the mountain in between and it's hit the mountain at 178 meters in height making it impossible to get to rest in peace fx61 you're a great craft lost craft alert lost craft alert lost craft alert Hey, I need some money. I've got to go and pay a bill.